Hi, welcome to this video. Oh, we are on a mission. I don't know if it's going to be successful, but you know, there are moments in your life that you think, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Just a little bit of background and we'll get on with the rest of the subject because this is important. You see, one day I went out to take the garbage out a little bit earlier than I normally do, just completely out of my rhythm, and I saw a trail of bark so this happened when an orchid aficionado sees this by the garbage dumpsters uh just follow the trail is all i can say Ta -da! poor little baby this poor little baby was on the hot concrete in the blistering sun completely abandoned but whoever it was that left it there was still kind enough not just to toss it into the dumpster because then I wouldn't have seen it so let's try and rescue this little one because I think it is high noon there are no guarantees but I'm going to talk you through what I do when I see something like this even though upon close visual I have a pretty good idea what we're up against I have prepared myself, and if you find yourself in a similar rescue situation, you're going to need cinnamon, you're going to need garlic alcohol, you're going to need hydrogen peroxide, cotton discs, <laughs> a sharp cutting tool, tweezers maybe, but it's good to have them handy, and a paintbrush which is always the best way for me to apply the garlic alcohol to any subject that needs to have a little bit of a TLC and possible pest intervention, or if it's just for preventative purposes. But let me get the star of the show. One final very important, very important detail is to welcome a new orchid, no matter how beautiful, ugly, distressed, or healthy she is. Every new orchid at Ninja Orchids gets a welcome cocktail of cow mag and seaweed. And in this case, I've got 150 parts per million in there. That is more than double the cow mag I normally use, which would be 60. And I've got 50 parts per million of seaweed at a pH of 7. And that is because, well, let's get our little candidate. I am so excited. I can't even keep my thoughts straight. Look at little one. First of all, let's welcome this cute little orchid into the collection, and I sincerely hope that she decides to stay. Poor little thing. The reason I went with 7pH on my solution there is because, well, it doesn't take much to look at this and say, hmm, media is possibly breaking down, is breaking down, let me correct that, but look, baby is trying. We've got root tips. But we have everything else going on as well. Shame. Sunburn. It is dry though, so we are not going to be needing to cut into any tissue. Clearly, super, super dehydrated. The roots and the orchid are screaming for some moisture. We still have what is possibly an intact crown. Now, <clears throat> I'm looking at this part right here, which is a bit yellow. Yeah, that could be a little bit dodgy, but we're going to give her the best start in our collection and see how she fares. And the best way to start is by giving her something to drink. Oh my goodness, how long was she on that concrete? How long has she not had water where she came from? I just want to thank the orchid gods that she crossed my path because I normally do not go out at that time of day simply because there's too much going on on the patio and of course avec les animaux with these animals. So calcium and magnesium 7 pH, taking into consideration that that media is horrible. And then whatever is in that pot will be so acidic it will reduce it down for the maximum absorption of the calcium and the magnesium. This is day one. I am now looking at the orchid to see if she needs anything else from me. I don't need to cut into tissue. I'm going to let all this just dry out on its own. Seeing as it's sunburned, there is nothing messy or squishy about any of these burns. Not even this one right here. Yeah, that's just going to be drying out and getting crispy. 
if there was anything that I could see in the crown here, I would be dumping cinnamon into there. I can't judge at this point in time whether she's got stem rot. It could also be a lack of light, influence of light, depending on where she was, that we have here a margin that is a little bit lighter because you can see the V shape right here. That is because there was more light here than the stem. So at some point in time where she was growing before, the orchid did grow, but this bit didn't get enough light, which reciprocates and repeats itself with the leaf that was trying to come out. Clearly that leaf had some issues. I'm assuming it started to go black and rot out and somebody tried to cut it. Clearly this is a store-bought orchid as a gift to someone because we only see two spikes. So someone said, well, the blooms were nice. I tried and then dumped it and didn't recognize the potential of seeing root tips growing. Never mind. Their loss is our gain. One person's garbage is another person's treasure. Hey, <laughs> she is very welcome here. So what I'm going to start with using cotton discs, I am wiping each leaf down with hydrogen peroxide, not the underside of the leaf because she's so, so stressed, but just the top to see if there's anything that could be in any way, shape or form bacteria or fungus. So first of all, just wipe every single leaf, only the top. The reason I don't want to do the bottom at this stage is because it's late afternoon and the stomata of Phalaenopsis orchids start to open into the early evening and throughout the night. So I don't want to be rubbing around down there. It's okay just to get her through and cleaned up on the surface in case any hitchhikers also came along. When I carried her home, I thought I was the luckiest, luckiest person in the world. So now I'm using another disc, fresh with hydrogen peroxide, but I'm starting on the second leaf because the first disc, I went one leaf, two leaves, three leaves, and then now she has fresh hydrogen peroxide on that leaf as well. So I'm using that disc for the second leaf, and now I'm going to switch to another fresh disc and repeat the same thing for the lower leaf with the fresh hydrogen peroxide and so on and so forth. But I cannot tell you, these things don't happen in my neighborhood. I have never seen an orchid by a garbage dumpster ever. And if I had, I would probably have a lot more Phalaenopsis in my collection. It's almost like, you know, you can't help yourself. If you were to see a puppy, would you just walk by? Or would you rescue that puppy? And for me, that's the same with orchids. I doubt very, very much that this orchid is going to live. She is super stressed. There is so much hope though in my mind because she is growing root tips. However, if she has had some form of infection in the stem that at this point in time I cannot identify and the stress that she has undergone before she came into our collection, well, that is going to take the orchid down and we may already be too late, but we are going to try. We're going to give it a go. And I'm trying to think of a name from her. Nobody comes onto my collection like this and doesn't get an ID reinstalled, even though it may not be her original ID. It is now the Ninja Orchid's ID. If it were earlier in the day, what I would be doing is also taking hydrogen peroxide and really going to town around the crown. It's too late for that. But what I can do in case something is lurking in the stem is just paint the stem and the crevices with garlic alcohol. Just to see, preempt, give her a head start. And I'm going to leave her soaking in this calcium and magnesium and seaweed soak overnight. She is going to need it. And in the short time that we've been fussing over this orchid, the roots are greening up as they should because they were just dehydrated. They were not dead. You see how yellow that is? Yeah, it looks much yellower on camera than it is in actual fact. It's like a pale green but I don't see anything in this crown at all at this moment 
that would make me think, no, this is not worth it. Every time I see this, it is worth it, and I'm going to give it my best shot. Woohoo! I am so happy! What a treat! Whoever dumped this orchid at least had a heart and didn't throw it into the dumpster. I think this is pretty amazing, and I'm one one happy lady. <laughs> I have a name. I just thought of it just now. I'm going to call her Sopresa. <laughs> Surprise! When I saw the trail of bark, I was like, okay, well, really not expecting anything to be at the end of that trail. So, surprise, Sopresa. So, I hope that Sopresa has now understood what is happening around her root system and that it'll give her hope to fight and stick around. Wouldn't it be fun? I think it would be amazing to see her like this and maybe in three years to do an after shot. Oh, I'm so excited. Anyway, even if she doesn't make it, should you find yourself in a similar situation and you come across an orchid that is so, so poorly, these are the steps that I take when I take immediate action to try and give the orchid some strength and to give her her hope back. Let's just have a look-see at the root system since the soak. It's not too shabby. It's not too shabby. Oh, please live. <laughs> oh, like a kid in a candy store. I love it. She may look scruffy now, but she looks beautiful to me. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Now would be a good time to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell because updates on this orchid will follow. Even if it means having to say goodbye, we gave it a go. So have a beautiful day on one condition though that you'd please stay safe. Take care. Bye. I couldn't resist to add this clip at the end. Here she is 24 hours later, still soaking, but you can see the leaf has perked up a little bit. The other ones are starting to huh, just get a little bit more hydration and take her out of the pot. We're going to drain the pot so we can have a look at the root system, how it's recovered. Sorry about the shadow. See, it's all nice and plump again not like they were yesterday shriveled like this because this is what they looked like also in the pot oh hold on sopresa we are rooting for you at least i am and i'm thinking that probably the majority watching this video will be rooting for you as well so now that she's had her calmag soak we're going to let that pot dry out and proceed with the rejuvenation and saving journey of my little new Sopresa.